This morning I was visited by some door-to-door -door Christians. I was actually just in the middle of taping my, my next video about William Lane Craig's reasonable faith. <laughs> and then there's a knock on the door and it's these uh, church people. Um, but actually, before I get to that, I'm, I'm in my uh, grandmother's house to do this. And uh, would you like, do you want to see a picture of me as a, as a little baby? You would? You wouldn't, would you? I'm going to show you anyway. Here we go. This, this middle one here, this black and white one, uh, that's my dad. And then this one here in the little sailor suit, that's me. Uh, and then this other one on the other end in the same sailor suit is uh, my little brother. It's me and my brother and my dad all at about the same age, all wearing uh, similar outfits. And in the case of me and my little brother wearing the, the exact same outfit. And isn't that just so adorable? Don't you hate it when people show you their fucking baby pictures? So anyway, these Christians come knocking this morning, and they were very lovely people. It was two women, and they uh, were going just door-to-door, -door, cold calling, essentially. I kind of, I, I mean, I feel for people like that. I, 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 I can't honestly say that I respect what they do, because I, I think mostly what they do is just bother people. But I had a very, very brief stint as a door-to-door -door salesman back 12 or 13 years ago. Uh, I sold Kirby vacuum cleaners for like a month, uh, and I, I quit and sought employment elsewhere because I sucked at it. But I can relate, I can understand, I can empathize with people who go door to door and, you know, you knock on the door and you don't know who's behind the door. You don't know if anyone's even going to answer the door. And sometimes you would rather they didn't answer the door. That's probably why I failed as a vacuum salesman, because even though my livelihood depended on someone opening the door and me going in and talking them into buying a really expensive vacuum cleaner, I always kind of just hoped that nobody would be home. So I got the door, and we stood there for about five minutes and had a, a lovely little chat. It was, most, it was me and, and one of the women. The other woman just kind of stayed down on the sidewalk and didn't really say much except, you know, hi and bye and thanks and whatever. But me and the lady who did the talking had a nice little uh, discussion. She asked me if I was uh, a Bible reader, and I said, no, I'm an atheist. And she seemed just delighted that I was an atheist. I don't know if she saw it as an opportunity or if she was just trying to be polite and overcompensating. I'm not sure. And then she asked me why I was an atheist, and she didn't even do like the presumptuous Christian thing, where like they're always sort of assuming that you used to be a Christian, and then something awful happened, and now you're an atheist because you've been wounded. Uh, she said, oh, have you always been an atheist? Or did, you, did something happen to uh, cause you to become an atheist? I mean, I felt it was a much more fairly worded question. So I really like this woman at this point. And she says, well, uh, let, me just, let, me, let me just lay this on you. And she essentially gave me a version of uh, William Paley's argument of uh, if you are walking along the beach and you see a, a pocket watch laying in the beach and you pick it up and you examine it and you see the gears and everything, you're naturally going to assume that the watch had a watchmaker. You're not going to assume that it is there as the result of some natural process. Uh, the argument from design, essentially, is what she, she gave me. Uh, except instead of a watch, she said, imagine if you're walking down the sidewalk and you see a rock and you pick it up and the rock is uh, carved or molded into the form of uh, a person's face. Are you going to think that the face was created by some natural process? Or are you going to think that the face had a sculptor? And immediately I said to her, well, actually, there are instances in nature of natural objects that look to us like human faces. And, and the one that, the, the best example to use, and the one that I used with this lady, is the Badlands Guardian. It's this huge rock formation that you can actually see on Google Earth. If you Google uh, Badlands Guardian, you can look at it uh, on satellite photos. It's this huge uh, geologic formation that when you look at it uh, overhead, I think it's in Canada, uh, and when you look at it from overhead at a high enough altitude, it looks uncannily like uh, the face seen in profile of an American Indian with a full headdress behind. It's really, really stunning the first time you see it. I mean, and it's a natural formation. It was formed by erosion over millions of years. It is not 
a statue or a human made object at all. And uh, the only human made part of it is there is an access road cutting through it that was man made that leads to some sort of a uh, a station at at what looks like it would be the ear of the Badlands Guardian and it actually looks like he's listening to an iPod like he has earbuds in uh, which is you know that, that's the only man-made embellishment to this otherwise natural formation that looks so much like a human face uh, so I, I, I cited the Badlands Guardian immediately uh, and I admit in here in my head uh, I tried not to show it there was this sense of uh, self-satisfaction at, at coming up with that so quickly, at, at responding to, you know, the, the argument from design and the, oh, you, what if you found a, a rock that looked like a face? What would you think? Immediately, I was like, oh, Badlands Guardian. A little smug, you know? I don't think I let on. At least I tried not to, but I, there is a little bit of a smug feeling in, in the brain. See, what you don't realize is, I know sometimes I can come across, I, I never really meaning to, but I know sometimes in these videos I can come across as some somewhat self-satisfied uh you have no idea what comes across in real life and especially through this uh youtube channel is just what makes it to the surface there's so much smugness and and overwhelming self-satisfaction going on in here at all times at, with virtually Everything I do, I'm so pleased with myself so often that, I, I mean, if you, if you knew me in here instead of out here, you would find me utterly insufferable. It's really, 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 really incredible. And my whole reason in sharing this experience with you is just, just to point out uh, how pleasant the exchange was with these two ladies, especially the one that did most of the talking. We parted on good terms. She was still a Christian. I'm still an atheist. Uh, and it was just nice. And I, I, I wish that those type of, of pleasant, respectful exchanges uh, where each person shares their views and makes their argument and defends themselves, but it never becomes hostile. I wish that that would happen more often. I know that it can't happen all the time. I know that there are circumstances where that's not appropriate, where, where a harsher tone is totally justified and should be taken, but it, it just it makes me wish that the, the more pleasant, friendly conversations would happen more often, and I, I mean, I, I'm I'm in the middle now of a of a video debate with Parth, uh, the uh, P builder, who is a Christian apologist, and and I I want that debate to have a more casual, friendly tone to it, and I tried to have that kind of tone in my debate with Shock of God a few months ago. Uh, Shock did not always cooperate with that. He has a naturally very uh, condescending very aggravating tone when he presents his arguments but I tried to remain apart from that and uh, I just I, you know I like it when we can treat each other as as opponents without treating each other like enemies and that happened this morning on my front stoop with these two Christian ladies and I'm I'm glad that it happened that way and uh, I just wanted to share that with you and it was also an excuse to make a video here in my granny's house and to inflict upon you my baby pictures which I'm sure you all appreciated